What's up guys? Hope everybody had a great Christmas. Just got inside. I was out working on a few projects. It is a lovely 11 degrees outside right now. So whew, it was a little chilly, but uh, glad to be inside. Got the wood stove cranking and I uh, want to do a quick introduction. Um, the first part of this video is from a while back. I was, uh, it's a couple months back, I was headed to a little fly-in that my buddy Scott put on. We were not able to have the Rands fly-in this year because of uh, COVID rules in Kansas. They weren't able to have the gathering at the factory there, unfortunately. So my buddy Scott, he's got a place down in uh, southeastern Colorado that's pretty cool. Invited, invited Rands people to come down, and me and a handful of other guys went down and had a really nice time. I did a horrible job of filming it. That's why you have never seen anything about this. I'll put up a little bit of footage that I managed to get, but it wasn't very good. But we had a good time just hanging out with those guys and uh, appreciate him putting that on. It's a cool uh, cool deal down there and we're going to do it again and I'm looking forward to it. I was planning on going down on a Friday evening, staying the night and then flying Saturday with those guys. Ended up going uh, early Saturday morning after a real long night fixing the plane. So I was getting ready to head out and uh, kind of had an interesting thing happen. So let's go back in time. I'll show you what happened, what I did to fix it and improve it so it won't happen again. Um, and then we'll go into the latest uh, little debacle and what's going on there. All right, let's get to it. I am all loaded up, ready to go. It was warming up, started taxiing out to go take off. And I'm using some right brake because it's blowing like crazy out here. And I felt and heard this pop and I lost my right brake. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, so I got to take it all apart. I get to looking and what it had done is sheared off the three bolts that go through the brake rotor and into the wheel. Uh, there were spacers on it sitting on here to bring that disc up away from those bush wheels so the pads will clear. And, uh, you know, quarter inch bolts, spacers, and dual pucks, that's a lot of strain on it. And, you know, if you watch this channel, I land in a lot of short spots, so I'm working those brakes pretty hard. And obviously it fatigued the bolts. Maybe they weren't tight enough, who knows. And it snapped them all off. So we drilled them out, we got the bolts out. The plan, we gotta improve this while it's apart. There's enough room on everything that we can go to the next size up. So we're gonna to go to a 5 16 bolt and uh, make new spacers, and that'll give it enough strength to uh, to work. So the 5 16 bolt, uh, the heads on the, uh, uh, the Allen bolts will clear the inside of the rotor here, so it'll work. And there's enough meat on the aluminum. So, uh, one of them didn't drill out right, so we got to put it in the mill and go through it so that we'll get the hole straight where it belongs and round so we can tap it. Of course, that has to happen. The other two came out fine. Anyway, I, you know, I'm, it sucks that it happened, but it happened 100 feet from the hangar, and there's no better place to break your airplane than 100 feet from your own hangar. Okay, so I just finished the spacers. Um, it was a little bit tricky to get both sides faced off evenly with each other so that, uh, you know, it's not thicker on, you know, one end versus say the bottom side or something like that. So I used the front of this to put a little pressure on it and uh, get them squared up in the jaw and then go back and forth cutting one side and then the other. But they're all identical. They're within less than a thousandth of the same thickness so the disc will ride flat and not be wallering around and uh, I cut them slightly thinner than the uh, spacers that were in there because there was a little bit of clearance and that just makes it a little bit stronger so I gotta face these off a little bit because they're a little too wide and the bowl holes don't line up so I'm just gonna put a flat spot on them and then you should provide more coverage area, which makes everything a little bit tougher. So there it is. The uh, spacers are in. You can see them underneath there. Um, there they are. They stick out a little bit, but uh, I haven't actually checked that yet, but I don't think there's any clearance issues. 
bolts are just snug right now. I'm going to Loctite them with something removable. But the bolts are long. They're the next size up. The spacers are bigger. That'll be way tougher than it was. All right, so that was a bummer. But uh, anyway, uh, actually, it's a good uh, heads up for anybody else. If you're running the Matco wheels and the spacers and bush wheels, um, you need to look at this because this is the third third one of these that's broke that I know for sure. And uh, I'm sure there could be more out there. So check the bolts, of course, make sure they're tight, maybe lock tight them in, maybe put new bolts in. Any of those things would help, but I think ultimately they need to be pulled out and drilled out and upgraded to a larger size bolt, unfortunately. I know that's a, that's a pain, but it's something to think about. You know, I was thankful it didn't happen on top of a mountain or something in uh, some short spot riding the brakes hard and, you know, all of a sudden I'm going in a circle. Of course, when I got back from that flying, um, went ahead and pulled the other side apart and did it just like you saw in the video. Just get ahead of it and make sure so I don't have to think about it anymore. And it's been working great ever since. So just heads up for you guys. All right, let's go a little more uh, recent here. And uh, I'll show you guys a stupid, unfortunate thing that shouldn't have happened. Cost me quite a bit of hassle and plenty of money. And yeah, just one of those things, right? So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into that one. Okay, so I'm working on, uh, I got to change out some EGT probes. And I got to tell you guys, some of you guys have asked about the MGL uh, instruments that I'm running. You know, I got a whole bunch here in my panel. And uh, I had some in the last bird. Great instruments, never had a problem with them. Um, they're pretty customizable. You can put different, uh, you know, run different kinds of senders with them. Some are user programmable. There's a lot of, a yeah, decent amount of flexibility. And they've always worked well. However, with that being said, I've been buying their MGL's EGT probes because they thread right into the 914 or uh, Edge exhaust. And I've just had a ton of trouble with these. I've probably had four or five quit, and they just keep, you know, just keep giving me issues. So uh, I think I found an alternative that is better, and that is it's from. You get them from Auber Instruments, and uh, I've been running a couple of those EGTs. I also have one back here in the end, uh, going in after the intercooler for my outlet temperature. They also come with an adapter that threads right in there. It's easier to get the, uh, the probe in and out if you have to change it than these. These are a real pain because they don't unthread unless the wire is either cut or you pull the exhaust off and unthread the exhaust off the sense the sender itself so um anyway they're working really good i like those auburn ones so far so good i'll update you guys you know in the future if i have any issues oh the other thing is uh those auber probes are uh quite a bit longer so those mgl ones would barely reach from the front cylinders so obviously I knew I had an issue, I had a probe that was reading really weird, that's why I bought these other ones. And I go in there to replace it, and the whole end of the probe is broke off. And then a whole, a whole lot of things started making sense, because that last time I had flown it, when that probe started acting up, right towards the end I noticed, man, I, I made a takeoff and my boost was like two inches low. And then when I'm taxiing in, I, I didn't hear the turbo whistling. You guys have heard it in my video and stuff, it sounds awesome, you know, down at... Uh, lower throttle when you're taxiing around and I, I wasn't hearing it whistling hardly. I started changing those probes first and uh, sure enough I see uh, oh, the end of that one's broke off. So of course I started investigating and uh, sure enough it had gone through the turbine wheel and just chewed it all up. So I'll show you guys what that looked like. Yeah so here you go you can see it right here. See this turbine wheel is just all chewed up. Um, you know it's amazing what happens. These don't hold up well when foreign objects <laughs> get sent through unfortunately my EGTs are like 1480 max uh, in cruise that's like the highest they've ever been uh, wide open it's I, I've have I've tuned it rich enough that I'm in like the high 1300s or up around 1400 is all so you know not running super high temperatures or pushing it that way or anything you know to have that probe break off is just pretty ridiculous um, hasn't seen that extreme of heat it wasn't very old really just an unfortunate stupid thing to have happen but obviously no more mgl probes for me i am uh, officially done running those 
Uh, I think just about anything else would be better than that junk. So I had a, several of them quit and then this, and it's like, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. So, so yeah, it was, it was a bummer to have this happen. I had to buy a new center section. Um, why I had it apart, I did a little port and polishing to the, uh, to the housings, just to kind of clean them up, make them smooth and nice, nice transitions, make everything look good. Didn't really expect to gain much out of it, if anything. In fact, I'd kind of forgotten about doing that because it was several days later that I got it all together because I ran into another little problem that was my own. And uh, anyway, I flew, I've flown it twice and I could swear to you that I'm getting a little more RPM at the same boost level. Once I got everything tuned back and dialed in again, I was seeing better RPM. So I don't know, maybe that stuff helped a little bit. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have to show you guys what I did. I, I really screwed up, man. I broke the banjo bolt off on the oil feed line on the top of the turbo. It wasn't an issue of getting it back out or anything like that. The issue was I didn't have another one and that bolt 60 bucks. So I set out on a little adventure to make my own because I had some time off, I wanted to go flying and I'm like, I can make that. You know, it's a oddball metric thread. So it ended up being quite a project and I'll show you guys kind of what went into doing that. <laughs> really wish I wouldn't have broke that bolt off because it's a odd size banjo bolt. It's an eight millimeter with a one millimeter thread pitch. And it's a very fine thread. And turns out that uh, I have, you know, I just went and looked through a thousand metric bolts. Oddly enough, the next size up I can find in that thread pitch, but in the eight millimeter, it's a coarser thread, all of the metric bolts I have. Uh, if you buy the bolt from Rotax, it's 60 bucks. It's like $59 uh, for that banjo bolt, which is ridiculous. And the only thing special about it, other than just being a banjo bolt with holes through it to let oil through, is the end is cut to make sure it has a seal against that little ball and spring uh, to keep oil from leaking down through the turbo and out the seals. I'm going to try to make one. This is going to get exciting. It's going to be a ton of work for one stupid bolt. And that's because I want to go flying this weekend. Otherwise, I'd just wait. And it may not work out, and I may just wait anyway. But I've got a couple hours a day. It's like, well, might as well try, right? That's what we do. So I've got to go over and pull the adapter off the top of the turbo so I effectively have a nut so that when I cut the threads in the lathe, I can actually make sure they work before I pull it out of the lathe because once you take it out, that's it, you're done. Finally got all the gear set. You gotta follow this chart in order to set the right gears for the right pitch. And I had to take apart and do a bunch of stuff and use a special thing that dad had made for a spacer because it didn't even have what it needed. But anyway, that should be set to a one millimeter pitch now, so we can cut this bolt. Right. You're by no means good, great quality or anything like that. So we're using a hard bolt because by the time you drill it out and hollow it out and do all this stuff, it's going to get weaker. And if it's a soft, crappy bolt, it's just going to twist off again. So. We're using a pretty hard bolt, but that also makes it harder to machine and drill and do all the things. Oh, it's here. What do they say to do here? Go where? Uh, oh, it does have a position thing, doesn't it? Yeah, so it was, the, it was B, wasn't it? Uh, hold on, 2660. It's B and it's 5, if that matters. Yep. <laughs> it hell does matter. Well, that ain't B. What about it? B's down here, isn't it? Well, oh, oh one, two, three, four, five. There is five, and there's five letters, so yeah. And it says the arrow's down. Yeah, so it would be that one. Or maybe it was in B, and I took it out. I don't know. And no. Then it said five. Okay. And which... this service didn't have no numbers on it when I got it, so I ended up putting some on Can you see that? Yeah, it says one, two, three, four... That would be five, right six, seven, eight. Yeah, so we want, we got to go over somehow. Okay, How do you okay. do that? Oh, you shake it. Oh. Is that it there? Is that where I want to One, two, three, four. I, I should get a light here. Yeah, I believe that's right. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's it. B5. You want to just watch it once without yep, cutting? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, the other thing I got to do is I got to pick a number here. We're going to pick one. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because we're not going to release it, remember? Right. There we go. Okay, so now, here, I went to a lot of trouble. Did this a long time ago. So let's do this. What's that? Let's do this. Oh, use that other motor that's real slow? Well, it backs it up. Oh, okay. That's right. 
And what transmission is this? This is off a motorcycle. Yep. It's off a Honda or something? Yeah, a little Honda 125 back in the late 70s. Okay, so now when you do this, see it backs the Okay, yeah, that way we can leave it attached, the whole thing. Well, yeah, because now I want to go back and board here, see? Now, I'll check myself, make sure I'm in the, in the right groove here. Looks right to me. Wait, 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 let's see. Does that look like that's going to enter in there? I don't know. I can't tell. But that's why we're doing it with the bolt extra thick, because we haven't even cut it to size yet, so that we yeah. can find out yeah. if this is going to work. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> and that's what we want to do, so now you can back it up. Yeah, so all we got to do is run this in and out, right. and, and then run the two motors back and forth. Right. Without so, changing anything else. But at this point, you need to now cut that down to the right diameter. All right, check this out. It's going on a little stiffer this time, probably because it's, like, it's just a little dirty. Oh, there's burrs. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll clean it up a bit. Anyway, there it is. It's threading on. So, so we got through one side. Yeah. Now, don't count on it being exactly in the center. No, I know. As Who long cares? As it doesn't, yeah. The oil won't know the difference. As long as it catches the inner hole, it doesn't matter. You're through, dude. All right, there it is. You're going to need to deep burn that a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to be real careful to get all rid of all the burrs. Is that a big enough hole for you? Well. That's a lot of oil. There's two of them. Yeah, there's so a lot of oil. So one could get plugged off, and I think the other one would still be big enough. Well, how is, what's going to plug them off? <laughs> well, hopefully nothing. Okay, is piston ring going through there? <laughs> Let's hope not. This is uh final product here. came out pretty good. And anyway, that spring and ball there go down inside there, and that's the check valve to make sure oil doesn't leak through and come out your seals. If you're noticing that turbo there, that's the OEM stock turbo. I'm getting ready to sell that. You know, it's in good shape. There's nothing wrong with it. The bearings are tight and everything. And then Rotex wants $5,800 for one of those new. So for somebody converting a like a 80 horse over to a, a 914, um, that's, that's a huge cost right there that... Obviously, I'll sell it for less than that it's used, but I should be able to get some good money out of it. But anyway, um, that was fun. That was a good challenge. Uh, I sure appreciate Dad taking, you know, a couple hours out of his day to help me because I needed a little help with this one. It was a little beyond me. And, um, when I, you know, setting up for threading and stuff, I, I just don't have the confidence to to do that without a little help. But uh, it actually went pretty well, and it's it's pretty straightforward once you get it going and, and you get set up. And, uh, but anyway, I really appreciate dad helping me. I'm lucky to have him, uh, around to help and I'm lucky that he's willing to, you know, he's still trying to make a living and trying to work and get stuff done. And he was willing to stop and, and help me. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, thanks dad. Uh, I'll head over in the morning. We'll continue this video. We'll put it all back together, the rest of it. And, uh, got to reset the cable on the servo and then, uh, fire it up. See what we got.
problem with cows is they're curious and uh, you do not leave your airplane unattended with them around or they'll come from all over it and that'll be the end of that. So I'm gonna have to push it back a little bit so I can take off. <laughs> Oh, my God. 